Hi Wendy, one of the major questions you had of me was how to facilitate students uh, providing long response answers to you and then you marking them using the marking guide that you have in your Word document. In a Moodle environment, a really good choice for that is the combination of the assignments feature and a grading form or a rubric. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm in my own personal version of Moodle. It's slightly ahead of yours, it's a higher version, so it looks visually different, but functionally it's the same. So these sorts of steps will also work for you on your own Moodle instance. So I'm going to quickly add an activity or resource, and the one I'm going to choose is the assignment feature. I'm going to hit add. I'm going to give it a name. and a description. I'm just putting in nonsense because I want to do this quickly. There's a whole range of settings for how the assignment is presented to students. I'm going to leave all of those as default at the moment. I'm going to scroll down to the important parts for this. The first is I'm going to turn some of these features on. I'm going to allow for online text. I'm going to allow for submission comments. I'm going to allow for feedback comments and I'm going to allow for feedback files. Those features will become important when I show you both the student and teacher perspective later on. Now, this is also a critical area for you, which is about the way that you grade them and your reservations around numeric grading. You can define grading schemas in uh, Moodle. You've already got one created. I've created one in my instance as well, called competency-based. It's a scheme that's only got C or NYC, they're the only two grades it's got. And I set that up before I started the recording. That's something your Moodle administrator would do for you. And then I'm going to scroll down. And this is the critical part here. Under grading method, choose the option which reads rubric. So we're good to go now. I'm going to hit save and display. And because I chose rubric on the previous screen, it's now asking me to either create a rubric or use an existing one. I'm going to create one, so I'm going to choose Define New Grading from Scratch. And I'm going to give it a title, a description. Again, nonsense is fine for me right now. And I'm going to get down to the meaty part, which is the rubric itself. So rubrics have kind of a grid concept. They've got criterion, and then they've got levels. And so for us, we've got a criterion. I'm going to use an example that we're doing a word processing exercise. So I'm going to be looking for features like spelling. But in terms of grading them, they're either going to be NYC or C. They're the only two grades that I'm going to allow. I'm going to remove this third grade because it's unnecessary for me. And now I can add additional criteria. So it might be grammar. And again, now this seems laborious, but it doesn't take too long. Two levels that are appropriate for that are NYC and C. I'm going to remove the redundant level. And I can continue down. I'll add one more. Of course, what you would be doing at this stage is you'd be copying and pasting the pre-existing criterion that you've got in your Word document. But for me, it might be formatting might be my last category. NYC and C. Remove the third category. Okay, so there we go. Pretty basic, but you can get the, the idea. Notice that I've left the NYC grade as zero points and the C grade as one point. That won't actually be visible to students, but it helps us to keep our records management straight. So just trust me on this one for now. And then I keep, I'm going to choose to leave all of these things ticked. Um, and I'll show you some of those features when we get to the other side. I'm going to save it and make it ready. Okay, so I've got my assignment created. I've attached a grading form. Let's have a look at what it looks like now for our students. So I'm going to go now and swap hats for a second. I'm going to switch role and I'm going to student view. I'll just go back to the top of the tree and click on the link. So this is what a student would do. So they're seeing the information that you created 
about your assignment they're also seeing and this is actually really I think important the grading form that they're going to be marked by so one of the AQTF compliance features is that you need to explain to your students not only when they're going to be marked for their assessments but why and how including your marking guide helps students to prepare their work so that they know that they're, they're submitting to your work that's up to your standard so I think that that's a really attractive feature then we go ahead and we hit add submission now you had asked me on the phone whether, teach, whether your students could simply just type straight in whether they had to submit a file always and I answered no not always that they can actually type in online text so if you've got a very simple thing that your students need to do they don't actually have to upload a file they can simply type in online text assuming that you've enabled it however most commonly what students do is they prepare a file for you and they submit that as evidence so I'm going to show you that so I'm going to remember I'm a student now I'm uploading a file and I'm going to save that so that's my student uh, I'm going to swap hats again now so I can show you what the grading experience is like for the teacher so I'm going to go now and return to, uh, switch roles now bear with me it's two clicks so I'm going to switch role to teacher and I'm going to have a look at this now from the teachers perspective so this is your trainers this is what you'd be asking them to do they would come in here they would view and grade all submissions there's a submission here you'll notice from this strange student Greg Bird so I can hit the little grade symbol here I get a summary of this submission there's the file which I could upload uh, sorry download and read and then I can use the grading form to actually do the marking and now you can see where the payoff here how quick the marking process is because I can simply go down and highlight the features as I see them as I'm marking them so this is analogous to your paper based version but they're doing it online and in the system and so tick 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 and they can add comments to each specific one so for instance okay so there you go done all of that there's an area for you to put feedback files to, sorry to put feedback to your students if you like At, attach any feedback files and then save changes now what you'll notice now is that this grade has moved over to competent so that you've got that sort of competency grade built into the system there's some tweaks about how you get that to work which will be beyond what I can cover in here but you, you're kind of tying together the notion of graded assessment and competency based assessment in the one instrument okay that's all I need to do there let me swap hats one last time to return to the student view so you can see what their experience now is so now when the student goes back in and has a look at their assignment they see the initial submission details as they submitted it and as they scroll down they get to see how they've been assessed for that and their total score is here you notice also any specific feedback has been built in so that's pretty close to a neat solution I think for the problem that you've got it's not perfect but it's a pretty close approximation of perfect and what it does is it centralizes all your records so they're all in one spot and it also makes it really really easy for the, t the trainers to do their assessment because they're just going down and they're ticking, ticking the list as they go down anyway um, I hope that's useful to you